in Psalm 50. I'm going to read two verses, two verses, two verses, two verses. I'm reading out of the King James. May read a little different in your Bible, but the same, same, same word. Offer unto God thanksgiving. Offer unto God thanksgiving. And pay thy vows unto the Most High. And call on thee in the day of trouble. Um, I'm for, verse 14 and 15, I'm sorry, verse 14 and 15, I'm sorry. Offer unto God thanksgiving, offer unto God thanksgiving, and pay thy vows unto the Most High, and call on me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and thou shalt glorify me. And I want to talk quickly about this subject. Don't mess up with God. Don't mess up with God. Just like there are things that unbelievers can do to mess up with God. Likewise, there are things that believers, the called, the leaders of God's house, and the volunteers in ministry, paid staff, people who don't have ministry titles, people who are not compensated for their labor. There are things that you can do to mess up with God. And I just I just wanna I just wanna look at Psalm 50 verse 14 and 15. I, I trust you will go and read it in your own time of study, your own time of devotion. Uh, it's a it's a great read, it's a great read, and you'll glean a lot of information and insight from Psalm 50. But when I read verse 14 and 15, 14 and 15, there are five things that stand out for me, five things. Uh, I generally give you a breakdown and then give you some practical points, but I don't want to overload you with, with information. I don't want to overload you with a lot of just preaching, preaching, preaching substance. I just want to show you the five clauses, the five clauses of Psalm 50 verse 14 and 15. Here is the first one. Offer unto God thanksgiving. Offer unto God thanksgiving. That's the first part of Psalm 50. Offer unto God thanksgiving. Here's the second part. And pay thy vows to the Most High. And pay thy vows to the Most High. First clause is what? Offer unto God thanksgiving. Second clause is what? Pay thy vows to the Most High. Here's the third clause. And call me when you get in trouble. And call me when you get in trouble. And call me when I when you get in trouble. Ain't too many people in life that'll tell you when you get in trouble. <laughs> call me. Matter of fact, we kind of share with folks the only time you seem to call me is when you get in trouble. But God says in this passage. When you get in trouble, call me, call me, call me, call me. All right, first, first clause is what? First clause, offer unto God thanksgiving. Second clause is what? Pay thy vows unto the most high. Third clause is what? Call me in the day of trouble. Fourth clause, I will deliver thee. That's the fourth clause. I will deliver you. I tell you all the time, don't read the Bible too fast. You miss more than you catch. I will deliver thee. And then the final clause. And thou shalt glorify me. And thou shalt glorify me. Just two verses. But it says a whole lot. And I want to give you, I want to give you, I want to give you five things that can mess you up with God. Five things that can mess you up with God. Here's the first thing. Here's the first thing. Defect in your praise life. Defect in your praise life can get you in trouble with God. Defect in your praise life. Defect. Defect in your praise life. Because what does he say? Offer unto God thanksgiving. And if you're not giving God thanks, there is a defect in your praise life. 
See, the word defect means that something is not working. Something is broken. Something needs to be repaired. So number one, defect, a defect in your praise life can mess you up with God. Boy, let me give you two. Let me give you two. Uh, number one is defect in your praise life. Here's number two. Debt's not paid. Debt's not paid. Debt's not paid can get you in trouble. Debt's not paid can get you in trouble. Because look what he says. Look what he says. He says, offer unto God, thanksgiving, and then the second clause, and pay your vow. Yes. To the most high. Yes. And pay thy vows. To the, I, I love it. He didn't stop and just say pay your vows. He says pay your vows to the most high. He said because I've noticed some things about my people is you treat your bill collectors better than you treat me. <laughs> You treat your mortgage, you treat your car note, you treat your electric bill better than you pay your vows to the most high. Hmm. Number one, defect and praise can mess you up with God. Number two, debt not paid. Debt's not paid can get you in trouble. Here's the third call. Here's the third. Here's the third one. Here's the third one. Deficiency in prayer. Deficiency. Deficiency in deficient. Lacking in prayer. Deficiency. Because look what he says. And call on me. Call on me. Call on me. In the day of trouble. Call on me. He says, if you don't call on me when you get in trouble, there is a deficiency in your prayer life. <laughs> Mm, mm, mm. What's number one? What's number one? Defect in what? Praise. What's number two? Debt's not paid. What's number three? Deficiency in prayer. Mm, mm. Here's four. Here's four. Here's four. Here's four. Denial of his power can get you in trouble. Denial of his power. I mean, it's right in the text. I'm not making none of this up. Look what he says. And call on me. Call on me in the day of trouble. Watch this. I will deliver thee. I will deliver. He, he says, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't ever want you to get to the point where when you come out of something, you attribute it to someone else. I will deliver. It's not your job that's going to deliver you. It's not your money that's going to deliver you. It's not your resume. It's not your Facebook account that's going to deliver you. It's not how skilled you are on the computer. I will deliver you. All right, then here's the last one. Here's the last one. Here's the last one. Number one is what? Number one is what? Defect in praise. Can mess you up with God. Number two is what? Debt's not paid can mess you up with God. Number three is what? Number three is what? Deficiency in prayer can get you in trouble. And what's number four? What's number four? Denial of his power can get you in trouble. And then here's the last one. Here's the last one. Divine worship, not practice. Come on, man. Divine worship, not boy. I'll try this sermon at home. Divine worship, not practice. Because notice, notice what he says. And thou shalt glorify me. And thou shalt glorify me. And thou shalt glorify me. Glorify me. Now, now let's go back. Let's go back and look at all of them. Offer. Unto God, thanksgiving. Offer, offer, offer. God says when it comes to praise, should nobody make you have to do it? When it comes to praise, should nobody have to pump you up? The music shouldn't have to get started. Nobody should have to raise their voice. Nobody should have to force you. He says, when it comes to giving me praise, 
offer it up. Be willing to do it of your own accord. He says, and if you can't do it on your own accord, there's a defect in your praise. And if there's a defect in your praise, he says, that'll mess you up with me. And then, then he says, and pay thy vows. And pay thy vows. Watch this. Because many of us and many people that you and I know are good when it comes to praising him but not too good when it comes to paying him. As a matter of fact, you and I know some people, we think praising him and paying him is multiple choice. <laughs> and most of the people you and I know, when it comes down to praising him or paying him, they would rather praise him instead of pay him. He says, but pay your vows. You know what he's saying? You know what he's saying here? All the stuff you promised me when you was in drama. All the stuff you said you was going to do when your back was up against the wall. All the stuff that you said, God, if you get me out this time, I promise I will never go back to this thing again. God, if you just work it out this time. God, if you get the bills paid this time. God, if you just touch my child this time. He says, pay me. You told me if I delivered you, you would serve me. And I delivered you, but you ain't serving. As a matter of fact, when you get a chance just for your own personal reading, your own personal reading, uh, in Exodus, in Exodus, in Exodus, in Exodus, uh, from Exodus uh, chapter 5, Exodus chapter 5, uh, all the way to about Exodus chapter, chapter 12 or so, seven times God says to Moses, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And Moses' words are this. Moses' words. Here, here, here are his words. Let my people go that they may serve me. That's what God says. Let my people go that they may serve me. Now they're in Egypt. They're in bondage. Let my people go that they may serve me. Catch God's mindset. My whole purpose of setting you free is so you can serve me. And if you're not interested in serving me, I'm not interested in setting you free. And what area of your life and my life is still in bondage? Because God knows if he really does it, we're not going to serve him. Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows. Pay thy vows to the most high. Pay thy vows. Mm, mm, mm. And then he says, and call me. Call me. Call me. I, I love it. I, I, I love it. He does not say call me until after he says pay me. <laughs> I mean, I ain't making this up. It's in your Bible. He doesn't start off saying call me. He says praise me. Pay me, call me. <laughs> Which suggests there are some calls that you and I have made to God that have gone unanswered. There are some calls that we made to heaven and nobody ever picked up. Because when God looked at our account, he saw we never paid him. He says, but if you praise me and pay me, when your behind gets in trouble, call me. Call me. Call. And all of us in here have had times in our life where we've had to call him. Mm, mm, mm. Then he says, and if you call me, because you praise me and you pay me, I will.
delivered you. I, I, I'm not thinking about delivering you. I, I'm not hoping I will deliver you. I will deliver you. You will see my power like never before. You will see my works like never before. If you praise me, if you pay me, if you call me, then watch me do what I do. And how many people have been watching, but you never called, and you never paid, and you never praised, so you ain't seeing nothing? I will. I will. And somebody on your road is a witness. Can't nobody deliver like God. Can't nobody open doors like God. Can't nobody set you free like God. Can't nobody open a door like God. Can't nobody make your enemies your footstool like God. Mm. And then he says, he says, after, after I've delivered you, watch this, he says, and thou shalt glory by me. Thou shalt glorify me. Divine worship. Divine. Thou shalt glorify me. Which suggests that when we give God glory, it literally suggests that we put the spotlight on him. And it is possible to give, think you're giving God glory and the spotlight is really on you. Come on. Come on. You ever, you ever heard somebody, you ever heard somebody preach and you can tell what nothing but flesh on display. You ever heard somebody saying and it was nothing but flesh on this flag? He says, you shall glory. You shall. And, and watch this. When you really want to give God glory, it don't matter what you got on. <laughs> when you really want to give God glory, it does not matter whether you got your hair fixed yesterday or today. When you really want to give God glory, it does not matter who's sitting next to you. When you really want to give God glory, you don't care who's talking about you. When you really want to give God glory, it's about you and how good he's been to you. And you want him to know that I'm not ashamed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When I was a little boy, I was a little boy, I was raised in Los Angeles, California. And, and right about my high school years, high school years, high school year, first year of college or so, I got a chance to go on this show called Soul Train. I know y'all don't know nothing about Soul Train, because I know y'all saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, right like mind of love Jesus these last and evil days. But Soul Train was this, 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 this little, little show that used to come on, a little dance show. And the guy used to always come on and he'd say, peace, love, and soul. Oh, you know Soul Train. Oh, okay. But anybody who's familiar with Soul Train, you know the highlight of the show was always the Soul Train It wasn't a little shuffleboard or nothing like that. It wasn't an artist. It was about the Soul Train And I remember when I went on the show, they, 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 they drilled us and they said, when it comes down to the Soul Train line, do your dance and go down the line. Do your dance and go down. It's only an hour show, and the Soul Train line is just a couple of minutes, and we want to feature as many people as possible. Do your dance and go down the line. And we all agree. We all agree. We all agree. And there I was in the line, and I was on the side with the rest of the fellas, and they was playing the song, and everybody was going down, and we was hyping everybody up and pumping everybody up. And I kept remembering, do your dance and go down the line. Mm. But when it was my turn, and the lights were on me, and I got to thinking about all of the people across the country who would watch the show. I got to thinking about this was a chance to be known. This was a chance for people to see me. This was a chance for folks to see what I can do. And then they were playing my song, Jungle Boogie Down. Jungle Boogie, get down, jump, get down, get down. 
And do you know it took me about three minutes? Somewhere between three to four to five minutes to go down the line. And I was excited. I was excited. I was excited. And I went back and told all my friends, I said, in two more weeks, they're going to air the show. And you got to see your boy. Because your boy represented. Your boy could not go down there and not represent the hood. Everybody couldn't go, but I was there and I had y'all on my mind. So I represented, and the show is going to be on in a couple of weeks. And they gave me the day, and all my boys gathered around. We all met at one person's house, and we was in front of the television, and they showed the Soul Train line. And I said, your boy coming up soon, your boy coming up soon, your boy, your boy coming. And do you know to this day, they have not shown me coming down the Soul Train line. I mean, to this day, to this day, and all my friends was like, what happened, man? I thought you represent, I thought, I said, man, something must have happened. They must have aired the wrong show, must have aired the wrong show. I'm gonna make a call, I'm gonna make a call, I'm gonna make a call tomorrow and find out what happened. And sure enough, I made a call and I talked to somebody and they transferred me to this area called editing. <laughs> And they said, yeah, we remember you, we remember you, you remember you, and we remember how long it took you to go down the line. We remember how you got caught up in your own thing. We remember how you just did not show the, let the show be shown in the way it's supposed to operate. So we had to edit you out so that people can show what the show is all about and not just see one person making a name for themselves. Oh, y'all missing that, y'all missing that. And how many times has God wanted to give you a blessing, but when you came to church, it was all about you, and it wasn't about him. When you got to lead praise and worship, it was about you and not him. When you took the mic to preach, it was all about you and not him. And God literally had to edit you out so that you would not make people think that you are greater than him. Ooh, I never forgot that. I never forgot that. I never forgot that. I never forgot that. And watch this. A couple of months later, I got another chance to go on Soul Train. Oh, yes, I did. I got another chance to go on Soul Train. And when the Soul Train line came up this time, watch this. I must have been the fastest person to ever go down that line because I wanted to make sure that this time they did not edit me out. And you know what happened when God woke you up this morning? He gave you another chance. He gave you another chance to praise him. He gave you another chance to bless him. He gave you another chance to say, God, it's all about you and it's not about me. You ought to make up your mind. You ought to make up your mind. I'm going to make the most. I'm going to make the most of my another chance. I didn't say you was going to make the most of your second chance because you and I blew our second chance long time ago. Matter of fact, we don't know what chance we on. You're not on your second chance, your third chance, your fourth chance. Lean over and tell somebody, I don't know what chance I'm on. But I just thank God that I got another chance. And since I got another chance, I might as well make the most of it. Since I got another chance, I might as well clap my hands. Since I got another chance, I might as well give it glory. Since I got another chance, I might as well lift my hands. Since I got another chance, I might as well say hallelujah. Since I got another chance, I might as well thank God. Because when you thank God down here, heaven start moving up there. Is there anybody here knows that heaven start moving down there? And when heaven start moving down there, on earth down here, he will bless you like never before. He'll pick you up, he'll turn you around, he'll place your feet on solid ground, he'll put clapping in your hands, he'll put running in your feet, he'll put joy in your heart, he'll put peace in your mind, and you'll make up your mind, God, I'ma praise you while I have a chance. God, I'ma praise you while there's breath in my body. Because he's a good God. He's a good God. And he's worthy to be praised. Offer unto me thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Every day should start off like this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for another day. Thank you that something good is going to happen today. Thank you that there's a check in the mail. Thank you that there's a car in the driveway. Thank you that there's a roof over my head. Thank you that there's food in the refrigerator. Thank you that the children are still alive. Thank you that you're going to make a way like never before. And I'm going to pay my vows. 
I'm going to pay my vows. I'm going to pay my vows. Everything I promise you, God. If I said I'm going to serve you, I'm going to serve you. If I said I'm going to be there when nobody else is there, I'm going to be there. And when I get in trouble, I'm going to call you. I'm going to call you. And when you bring me out, I'm going to glorify you. Mm, mm, mm. Can I tell you somebody? Can I tell you somebody who knew this? Can I tell you somebody who knew this? Can I tell you somebody who knew this? You ever heard of a fella by the name of Underdog? Mm, mm, mm. I know y'all don't watch much TV. Underdog had a girlfriend named Sweet Polly. Sweet Polly. An underdog delivered newspapers in the daytime. But there was a fella named Simon Bar Sinister who could not stand underdog. And whenever he wanted to get to underdog, he would mess with Polly. Yes, he would. And what he would do is he would kidnap Polly. I got a TV watch on the front row. That's, his name. That's the TBN crowd right there. This is the Cartoon Network right here. Come on, come on. And when, when, when he would take sweet Polly, I noticed Polly never cried. Polly never walked the floor. No, no. Polly never got upset. But she had a little jingle. She used to say, Oh, where, oh, where has my underdog gone? Oh, where, oh, where can my underdog be? And there was something sensitive about underdog's ears that they could always catch the voice of Polly. And no matter where Polly was, if Polly started singing her song, Underdog started singing his song. Her song was, oh, where, oh, where can my underdog be? Oh, where, oh, where is my underdog gone? Oh, where, oh, where can he be? But Underdog's song was this, when Polly's in trouble, I am not slow. It's hip, 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 and away I go. Her song was, oh, where, oh, where is my underdog gone? Oh, where, oh, where can my underdog be? His song was, when Polly's in trouble, I am not slow. It's hip, 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 and away I go. And he would go get, um, he would go get Polly and rescue her and bring her back to her place of peace. Y'all miss that? We got somebody bigger than underdog. We got somebody stronger than underdog. We got somebody whose ears are sensitive to our voice. And when your back is up against the wall, just say, oh, where, oh, where? Has my Jesus gone? Oh, where, oh, where can my Jesus be? And you know what Jesus will say? When my child's in trouble. I am not slow, but it's hip, 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 and away I go. And he may not come when you want him to come, but somebody here knows if you wait on him. Shake somebody's hand and say, if you wait on him, he will. Anybody know he will? He'll pick you up. He'll turn you around. Y'all are calling right now. You ought to clap your hands. Oh, 